Hey everyone, uh, this will be the first lesson in our last unit for the year, and I think that you will find this beneficial. Uh, this unit is going to just be a recap of all the important things that you need for Math 3. And so we're going to go through things like uh, trigonometry, basic right triangle trig. We're going to go through factoring over again and simplifying uh, polynomials. We're going to talk about graphing parabolas and then graphing lines. Um, so hopefully it's a good summary of the basic skills that you need to be successful for Math 3. But with that said, go ahead and get your notes out and take them just like you normally would. This is 10.01 and today we're going to be talking about simplifying radical expressions and the Pythagorean theorem. I don't have that listed here as part of the objective, but these go hand in hand. One is just um, basic arithmetic, I guess you can say, and then the other one is geometry, and so we can merge them together with the answers that we get. So with that said, let's go ahead and do a quick review of what a right triangle is. Now remember, a right triangle is a triangle with one right angle. You can't have two right angles in a triangle, otherwise it wouldn't be a triangle. That implies that the other two angles have to be acute. Because another thing that you should remember is that the three angles, the three corners in a triangle, have to add up to 180 degrees. So if this one, add, if this one is 90, then the other two have to add up to 90 to make 180, which means they both have to be acute. Now with that said, remember there, the three side lengths of the triangle, um, we call one of the side lengths or two of the side lengths, legs, the two legs are the two sides that intersect the right angle, or you can also view them as the two shortest sides, okay? Those are the two legs. So that is leg one, we'd say. That is leg two. And then the other side is the hypotenuse, and that is the longest side, or it's the side that is opposite from or across from, opposite to or across from, the right angle. So that side is the hypotenuse. Again, remember there's a difference between a length and an angle measurement. An angle measurement is a corner. It's made up of a vertex and two sides that form an angle, form a corner. Uh, where a side is, a, is measured in length, so it's measured in like inches. Okay, So that's a right triangle. We have other types of triangles, but we're going to focus in on the right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. So if you have a right triangle, then this formula, this equation, will always work. Remember, it's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. I know that your elementary school teachers have taught you a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, I don't like expressing it that way because students get mixed up with what the A is, what the B is, and what the C is. So we say leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. That's the better way of remembering it. If you remember me in class months and months ago, I did the leg squared plus leg squared equals hip squared. Can't do it in front of you here because we're on video. But anyways, um, so again, where A and B are legs and C is the hypotenuse. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We are looking for the length of line segment AC. In other words, we want to know the distance from point A to point C. Now, we have 8 inches and we have 6 inches. The first thing we need to do here is identify our two legs and identify our hypotenuse because the variable, the x as it were, will not always go in the same place of the equation. It will go in the place that it belongs. So the 8 and the 6 are both legs because those two sides are connected to the right angle, or they're the two shortest sides, and the side we're looking for is the hypotenuse. So in this case, we're gonna plug in our two legs. We get eight squared plus six squared, and that will equal AC squared. And then simplifying this, eight squared is 64, and six squared is 36. We add those together, we get 100. Now to get AC by itself, we're gonna square root both sides. Now we knew, we knew to do that before, but now we can emphasize that idea because we've gone through the idea of quadratics. Remember, when we square root a number, we always get two answers. So what is the square root of 100? Well, the square root of 100 is 10 or negative 10. We get two different answers. In this case, though, because we're talking about length, we're talking about the distance from one point to another, 
We ignore the negative answer because that's what's what we call extraneous. It's a solution that does not apply to the context of the problem. In other words, it just doesn't make sense in the situation that we're looking at. Looking at. And since the length of a line segment can't be negative, we're going to ignore the negative 10. But if I just said solve this equation, then you'd have to input the negative 10 as one of your solutions. In this case, our answer is 10 inches. All right, with that said, um, here is here is two practice problems. So go ahead and pause the video and see how you do with these, and then we'll come back and talk about them. For number one, remember we want to identify the three parts. We need to identify the two legs, which is the five and the x, and then the hypotenuse is the 13. So when we go to plug these values in, remember it's always leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So that'd be five squared plus 13 squared equals x squared. No, not at all. Hopefully you didn't set it up that way. We've done this probably a hundred times by now. It should be 5 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared because it's always leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So that would be 25 plus x squared equals 169. You go, you tricked me. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I would say I was trying to trick you. I was trying to make sure that you understood what the Pythagorean theorem actually says and if you were paying attention to what I was saying. So, how would I solve for x squared here? Well, I would subtract the 25 from both sides, and I'd end up with x squared equals 120, oh, 144. And again, we're going to square root both sides. Well, what's the square root of 144? That is 12, or negative 12. And because we're talking about length here, we're going to ignore the negative answer and just focus on the positive one. So our answer is 12 centimeters. For number 2, what are the two legs? The two legs are 4 and 4, and the hypotenuse is x. So in this case, it would be 4 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. And that simplifies to 16 plus 16, or 32. When I square root that, now, you should know how to do this by now. Uh, this is actually a review of what we've done in the past. What's the square root of 32? Well, I don't know an exact answer to that. Um, in terms of a singular number, I know it's somewhere between 5 and 6 because 5 times 5 is 25 and 6 times 6 is 36 and 32 is right in the middle, or not right in the middle, but somewhere between 25 and 36. So that means my answer needs to be somewhere between 5 and 6. But if I want this in radical form, then I need to go through the whole simplifying radical. Now you should already know that. But let's do a quick recap of this. For those that did this problem, you should have gotten 4 radical 2. And if you remember, this actually would be a special right triangle because uh, we've got 4, 4, 4 rad 2. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. We'll talk about that in another lesson. But let's talk about simplifying radicals. Um, remember, to simplify a radical expression, it's like... Uh, you, you want to be able to factor this down. So if I have the square root of 25, you go, oh, I know that, that's 5, that's easy enough. Yes, but why? Because 5 times 5 gives you 25. Okay, so our answer is 5. Notice what I did there. I circled my pair of 5s. I need to have a pair of these. And then when I circle them, one of them goes out of the radical. And, and remember, I compared it to prison break. Two people try to escape. One, you, you have to have a partner to try to escape. As you try to escape, one doesn't get away. They don't go back to jail. They get buried in the ground. The other one does escape. But the thing I want to notice is that the, this is a perfect square because it's 5 times 5. So we're, I'm going to try to approach it, it maybe a little bit different as we go through here. And again, uh, the negative 5 is also an answer here. The positive version is called the principal square root, and the negative version is the negative square root. Okay, for these guys, these should be easy enough. Let's see, what's the square root of 81? Well, we could break it down to 9 times 9, and then we circle the pairs, and we end up with 9 as an answer, or negative 9. But you could go further than that. You could say, well, 9 is 3 times 3, and then the other 9 is 3 times 3. So here I've got four threes. So if I circle a pair of threes, I actually have two circles. One of each of those goes out, so I've got a 3 and another 3. So 3 times 3 is, again, 9. For c, well, x squared can be broken down to be x times x, 
And again, we have a pair there, so we can take that out, and so we end up with x. Now, the reason I put don't put negative x is because x could be a negative number to start with. I don't know, so there's no reason to put that. All right, let's go ahead and look at um, examples that are not perfect squares, okay? So for the first one, it says, what's the square root of 75? Well, I could go through the work and factor that down. That factor is the 5 times 5 times 3, and you can do a factor tree for that. But 5 times 5 times 3 is 75. We're going to circle the pair of 5s, and so one of those goes out. And then the 3 has no pair, so they're going to stay inside. And so our answer is 5 rad 3. Another way I want to look at this, though, and I'm just going to write this uh, off to the side, is I'm going to say, well, 75 is actually 25 times 3. You go, well, yeah, that makes sense. That, that was not my prime factors. Here you could answer the question without going any further because we have a perfect square here, 25. What is the square root of 25? Well, the square root of 25 is 5. So I can take that square root out, and then there is no perfect square for 3. So my answer would be 5 square root of 3. So if you want to see it that way, that's probably the more mathematically sound way of expressing it, but either way will work. For number 70, or for part B, square root of 72, that factors the 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. You go, well, we got a lot of numbers here. We have a couple pairs. Well, let's go ahead and circle the pairs. We got a pair of 3s and a pair of 2s. So what happens? Well, one of the 3s go, goes out, one of the 2s goes out, and then that other two that was not a pair to anybody will stay in the inside the radical. And then 3 times 2 is 6. Now, if I were to use perfect squares for this, I would write it something like this. The square root of 72 is actually equivalent to the square root of 36 times 2, right? And now the square root of 36 is a perfect square. The square root of 36 is 6, so I can take care of that. That answer would be 6 radical 2. All right, so, and then last one, C here. Well, how do I, how do I factor C cubed, the radical C cubed? Well, that would be C times C times C. We're going to circle a pair of C's. One of those inside the circles goes out, and the other C that wasn't circled has to stay in. Okay, so that is some examples of what this looks like. Let's go ahead and uh, look at some practice problems for this. Go ahead and pause the video, do these three problems, and then come back on and see how you did. For number three, we're going to simplify the radical. Well, the square root of 120, what does that factor to? Well, square root of 120 factors down to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And when we circle a pair, we got a pair of 2's there. And so we would end up with two going out, one of the two's going out, and then these guys have no pairs, so those are going to stay in there. Two times three times five is 30, so two rad 30. If I wanted to treat this as a perfect square, I would notice that the square root of 120, the square root of 120 is actually four times 30. That's the best I can do with that. And four is a perfect square, so the square root of 4 is 2, and then the 30 isn't a perfect square, and I could try and find another perfect square, but it's not going to work out. So my answer is 2 rad 30 here. All right, for number 4, it looks a little bit more complicated because we have a combination of numbers and letters, right? We have some variables in there, but the work is still going to be the same. Notice that the 5x, the 5x is already on the outside of the radical. There's absolutely no reason no reason for us to uh, circle pairs and factor that because that's already outside the radical. Let's focus on the inside of the radical. 48x to the fifth factors to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times x squared times x squared times x. Now, if you wanted to, you could have factored the x to the fifth to be x times x times x times x times x. Five, five x's written in a row there. You could have done it that way. But I just wanted to shorthand it a little bit. Now, we can circle our pairs. We have a pair of twos, another pair of twos, and then a pair of x squareds. And so when we take those out, one of the twos from each pair will go out, and then the x squared will go out. 
Now notice what happened here. This 5x is still hanging out outside. Leave him alone. He's fine. He's happy. But these guys go outside. And then from here, we're going to simplify this as much as we can. Remember, we're going to multiply the values that are outside the radical. And then we're going to multiply the values inside the radical if there is anything there. So 5x times 2 times 2 times x squared, using your rules of exponents, would actually end up being 20x to the third. Because remember, we add the exponents when we're multiplying powers. And then we multiply the coefficients. 5 times 2 times 2 is 20. And then the rad 3x just stays inside. Now, number 5 is going back to the idea of the Pythagorean theorem. So what are the two legs? The two legs here are 3 and 9. So we'd say 3 squared plus 9 squared equals, and then the hypotenuse is x, so equals x squared. 3 squared is 9, and 9 squared is 81. So 9 plus 81 simplifies to 90. And then we'll square root both sides. Now in this case, if I want it in decimal form, my answer is going to be somewhere between 9 and 10, because 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100. But this is 90, since that's between 81 and 100, that means our answer is somewhere between 9 and 10. But if I want it in radical form, I need to simplify this radical. 90 factors to 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. Since we have a pair of 3's, we can take that out. We got 3 rad 10 as our final answer. I should say 3 rad 10 inches. All right, let's look at another practice problem here. Using the Pythagorean theorem, if you think you have a good grasp of this, go ahead and do it, and then come back and watch the video to see how you did. For this one, again, let's identify the two legs. The two legs are the ones that intersect at the right angle, or they're the two shortest sides. The 11 is not a leg. The 11 is a hypotenuse. So the two legs are the unknown thing. We call that RS and 7. So we'd say RS uh, squared plus 7 squared equals 11 squared. And then simplifying that, that's going to be 49 plus RS squared equals 121. We'll subtract the 49 from both sides. So we end up with RS squared equals 72. And then we'll go ahead and square root this. 72 factors a lot. It's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which we can circle pairs there. We've got uh, a pair of 2's and a pair of 3's, so we're going to take that out. We get 2 times 3 on the outside, and then the rad 2 stays inside, or the 2 stays inside the radical, and we're left with 6 radical 2. Again, you could have rewritten the 72 to be, uh, you could have rewritten this as a square root of 36 times 2. And because 36 is a perfect square, we could say the square root of 36 is 6, so that goes out, and then the radical 2 stays in. So we could write it, we, we could show our work um, both of those ways there. All right, and that's going to wrap up this lesson. So go ahead and continue on in the Google form, answer the questions that are presented. Hopefully this was pretty easy to you because we've been doing it all year long. If you have any questions, make sure you're logging into our Zoom meetings so we can work those out. I'll talk to you again later.